Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Friday, January 13th. I don't really buy into the whole Friday the 13th thing, Mark. I'm just more of a, I like 13s. I think it's one of those like quirky weirdo numbers. Who wore number 13? Who's a, someone who's important in sports? Who do we know? 13, the only one I can think of, and I'm not a fan at all, uh, Alex Rodriguez. Oh, right. Perhaps the biggest phony there is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I only own one jersey and it is an Islander jersey that was given to me, which is how I knew I got entry into my family of marriage, you know, and relationships. So once I got that, I knew that I was in, but I don't have a numbered jersey. Do you have a Rangers numbered jersey? I have one from my youth, number eight. Back back when I was a kid, I loved Darren Turcott on the Rangers and he was number eight. That's the only player jersey I have. In all of your stuff. That's pretty amazing. I wonder, like, I think Jackie has a couple. Um, No Clark Gillies for you, man. No Mike Bossy. I think Jackie would probably love Mike Bossy more than anyone else. Maybe Bobby Nystrom. That could be her. That would probably be her biggie. She loved Bobby Nystrom. 23. How do I know these things? I really got to expand my world a little bit. Okay. If you have a financial question, we'd love to hear from you. All you need to do is go to our website, jillonmoney.com. Click the Contact Us button. And uh, we like to make sure that we answer your emails. So here is an email episode, which I don't know. Some of you may like them better. I don't know. I like the interaction with people. Absolutely. Nancy writes that she enjoys the pod and the radio show, which airs in her area. Uh, WBEN Radio in Buffalo, New York. One of my favorites. Okay. This is the query. When I lived in North Carolina, I joined a credit union that is now offering 3% on CDs. I still have money there, even though we have moved to New York. Can't find any comparable credit union or bank that's offering as high an interest rate. Why is it higher in North Carolina than it is, than it is in New York? Thanks for the info. Uh, I don't know if this is more of a geographic thing or the fact that you're a member of that credit union, but uh, I'd take the offer. And I don't know the other answer to that, except to say that I take the best offer they have. If you're looking for CD rates, you should check out depositaccounts.com, bankrate.com, and poke around. It doesn't really matter where it is. And be sure that if you want liquid assets, online banking accounts are usually paying higher interest rates than your brick and mortar. Okay. Uh, This is from Chris says, hope you're doing well. Listen to your podcast every morning. I want to thank you for the insight. It's amazing how fast you can analyze data and formulate a response. Here is what Chris is writing about. I want to get your thoughts on my parents' situation and their social security. Mom is 71. Dad is 61. Dad has worked for nonprofits most of his career and is still working. He makes $36,000 a year. Mom stayed home with us, never really worked outside the home. They have about $300,000 in a brokerage account, $200,000 in cash and CDs. They have a paid for home of $300,000, no other assets. Okay. In your opinion, how do you think they should approach drawing social security? Dad will be 62 this year. He'll be eligible to draw social security. Oh, this is interesting. Since mom never worked outside the home, she gets half of what dad's benefit is. If he takes it at 62, it's 900 a month. Mom gets 450. If dad waits till 67, it goes up to 1244. Since mom is older, should that factor into the decision on when to start drawing? Are they both in good health? That's a good question, right? You know, nor if this were like switched and dad were older, it might be a different scenario, but I think that I still think waiting makes sense. What do you think, Mark? I think so. And he's still working. So are they able to get by on his salary right now? I'm guessing they are. If that's the case, as long as he's working, I don't think I would touch it. I don't think so either. I would try to wait as long as I possibly could until, you know, and unless he's like miserable or he's in terrible health or anything like that. But I think I'd wait because when he waits, it's also better for her. If we're missing anything, let us know. But if he can keep working, let's do it. Okay, Rob is asking about whole life policies. Thank you for the entertaining and informative show. I'm also a recent reader of your first book. It's prompted my question. Oh, well, then go ahead and order the new book. You'll be happy. Okay, here's Rob's background. I previously came on your show in the spring to discuss how I could invest money that I had set aside for retirement, and I've implemented your plan. I'm on track to max out my Roth IRAs for my wife and me this year. 
And we've allocated uh, about 17, 18 grand to my Roth thrift savings plan. Something we didn't cover was the fact that my wife and I each have whole life policies to which we pay annual premiums of, wait for it, Mark, $5,800. They're in their late 30s. They've got a seven-year-old. They have whole life policies that have face values of $250,000 each. We've entertained the idea of stopping these policies and using the money to finish maxing out my work retirement plan and our Roth IRAs. So here's a, here are the options. Take surrender value of each, $22,000. Put it in your high-yield savings account as an, emergency ref, as an emergency reserve fund. We had already been considering these policies as part of the fund. Take a reduced paid-up option, leaving us $100,000 of paid-up insurance in place. Continue to pay the seven years on the policies. And we also have term insurance ourselves, so I'm not worried about underinsured. If we stop paying, we know we would reallocate the monthly amount to my work plan, max it out going forward. Hey, let me just be clear. I'm having trouble working through is the feeling of the sunk cost. I hate that sunk cost, Mark. Remember, Annie Duke talked so much about that and whether the potential long-term care benefit riders would be worth it in the future. Thanks so much for your time. I want to find out if I'm a smart person doing dumb things with my money. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Get rid of these policies. Take the surrender value, do the 22 grand each, put it in your high yield savings account. That's your emergency reserve. Use the additional cash flow and max out your plan and just get over the sunk cost. Sunk cost is such a funny thing because it really does. It's like, well, I put all this money in. Who cares? You are where you are. You wouldn't make this decision going forward. So I say, you're done. Move on. Don't worry about the long term care riders. Then you're in a good place. Uh, by the way, his PS is uh, like a little by the way. I'm usually the morning riser in our family and will typically start the coffee, fire up this podcast first thing in the morning. If I'm listening to the pod when my wife comes down for coffee, it's very typical to get a good morning, hun. Good morning, Jill. Greeting. Kind of love that, don't you, Mark? You're part of the family. I am. Good Good morning to, the, to you, Rob's wife. Okay. Here's the subject. Can't believe I'm actually writing Jill and Mark. So this is from Joanna. I'm a listener over the past year, I stumbled upon you while looking for personal finance podcasts, and I'm obsessed, all caps. You two actually make me look forward to my drive to and from work, and you always make me laugh. So thank you. Hoping you can answer a couple of questions for me and my wife. I'm 42. My wife is 48. Two dogs, no kids. Income, 400 grand combined. Retirement, $500,000 combined. We got a late start. Uh, maxing out Roth 401k for me and traditional for my wife, along with maxed out um, health savings account for me and 401k match. So they're saving, holy moly, 70 grand a year towards retirement and additional $60,000 a year in a brokerage account, $130,000 in cash. They spend $14,000 a month. Well, I mean, they make 400 grand. That's not terrible. Question one, purchasing a new ninety thousand dollar car in a couple of months. Hello, Tesla. God, it just kills me. I mean, maybe car listen, cars are gotten a lot more expensive. So we're like the worst people to actually ask about that. Okay. Purchasing this new car, what are we going to do? We can replenish save <laughs> okay, pay cash, then finance. Yeah, pay cash. Pay cash. What what are we doing here? Come on. Of course you're going to pay cash. We're not I mean, you got to replenish the cash. Joanna says they can replenish cash like five to six grand a month. So I'm okay with that. You feel good about that, Mark, paying cash for their stupid $90,000 car? I mean, if you're going to do it, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Okay, Joanna. I hope you like your dumb car. I hate cars so much. Oh, I just hit 100,000 miles on my car, by the way, Mark. Uh, question two. I'd like to understand our long-term financial picture, assuming we can continue to save as we are saving now. Can you suggest a reputable fiduciary in our area who can do a one-time review and projection of our financial lives. Yes, I can. Um, good luck. I'm happy to, that you are obsessed and I'm very happy that you contacted us. And also tell us what kind of car you're buying. I can't even, I would never spend that much money on a car. It's too much for me. Oh my God. I've never spent, let me think about this. I've never spent more then, because I always buy used cars. So I've never spent more than $35,000 on a car. I'm going to have a real, I'm going to have some serious sticker shock next time, aren't I? Well, I'm putting it off for as long as possible. Okay. This is from Bo 
who writes, my uncle recently passed away. I'm sorry. And Bo's trying to help his aunt out with her financial situation. She was not involved with anything financial. She's struggling to understand how to proceed. They have a lot of credit card and mortgage debt. I'd like to get some advice on a plan going forward. Well, you know what, Bo? What we could do is we could have a conversation with you about her situation. We encourage you to come on the show and like have all her stuff together and we can maybe walk you through some ideas. Maybe we can get rid of some of this debt. Maybe we can really try to um, bang some of this out. She doesn't have to even be on the line. She can be. She can just listen. And then we can talk about how you could proceed, but we need a lot more information before we do that. Okay. All right. That's it. That's the pod. That's Friday. And you know, on Fridays, I like to do some nice kind of a uh, business. Our music is composed by Parisian based Joel Goodman. Aren't you jealous about that, Mark? Mark Talerso is our executive producer. We are distributed by Cadence 13. If you want to get in touch with us, all you need to do is go on to our website, jillonmoney.com. Click the contact us button. Let us know if you want to come on the air. When you're on the website, there's all sorts of stuff there. There is the free weekly newsletter. And of course, you can pre-order the book, The Great Money Reset. Please do that because if you do that, you will live and read our mantra for 2023. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.